this is the second half to your kinematic curves notes. This will be on velocity versus time graphs and acceleration versus time graphs, and then introduction to your kinematic stacks one worksheet. After you understand one, you'll be able to do stacks two worksheet. So to kind of recap where the last video left off, velocity versus time graphs kind of imply the slope of a velocity versus time graph kind of implies if you are speeding up or slowing down. By telling me speeding up and slowing down, or Mr. Lilly speeding up or slowing down, you're looking at acceleration versus time graphs. Also, you can look at a velocity versus time graph and say the object is at rest or it's moving at a constant speed. In other words, the cruise control is set. You're not hitting the brake pedal, nor are you hitting the accelerator. Okay, so something else that you really, really, really need to remember, this is the very, very big key thing here, guys, especially on, and pretty much only on, your velocity versus time graphs. If you cross over the x-axis, that implies that you have now changed directions. So for instance, you throw your pen up in the air and it comes back down into your hand. The point where it came back down, it was not moving, correct? It was like zero, it was like kind of like just suspended there in air. That would be crossing at that instant right there, crossing over the x-axis, in other words, zero meters per second, and then you're speeding up, but now in the negative direction. So once again, you cross over the x-axis, in other words, the object changed directions. Something else to always keep in mind, time is always positive and it is written on the x-axis. The slope of a velocity versus time graph will give you the acceleration of an object. So you need to have the velocity versus time graph in order to imply the acceleration versus time graph will tell you. We also looked at constant speed in the positive direction and constant speed in the negative direction. Um, once is, uh, one is blue, one is green. And then also when you are at rest, you are literally not moving. So like the light is red, look at your speedometer, how fast are you going? What is your velocity? You're moving at zero meters per second. So you would literally just put your slope right onto the x-axis implying zero meters per second as time is going on. So starting to stack some curves here. With you stacking these curves, we're going to draw a displacement versus time graph that shows a positive constant velocity. So starting off with this, oopsie, that's not correct. Okay, a uh, constant positive velocity. So there you go. So then, your velocity versus time graph would show you, as you are moving, you had one, one, two, two, three, three, et cetera, et cetera. So that gives you a one, and it's a positive one. So at like one meter per second, for instance, on the y-axis, you're just going to travel as time is moving on. So that would indicate this velocity versus time graph here would indicate that you're moving at a constant positive velocity. Also, now I'll draw the velocity versus time graph that would indicate this. You just did that right there. Okay. Next thing that we have is speeding up or slowing down. So to show speeding up on a velocity versus time graph, you're going to either be speeding up in the positive direction guys if you're speeding up your numbers are getting bigger right and this should be like common sense right now that if I say that you are speeding up in the negative direction where would you be above or below the x-axis stop and think about that if I was speeding up in the negative direction don't think about how you're traveling okay this is negative so negative implies that you would be down here 
and you are speeding up, the numbers are getting bigger. You're not moving at a constant, like a flat line across here. You're speeding up. It's just now it's in the negative direction. All right, so now let's look at some slowing down stuff. So you're slowing down, but now you are slowing down in the positive direction. So if you are slowing down in the positive direction, oops, that would imply that your numbers are going to be getting smaller, but they would be above the x-axis because that's where your positives are. So you are slowing down in the positive direction. Now what if you were slowing down, but in the negative direction? Take a second real quick and think about this, guys. If you were slowing down in the negative direction, we can all agree that our numbers are getting smaller, right? Because you're slowing down. You're watching your spinometer go from 50 to 45 to, to 40 to 35, etc. But now you're in the negative direction. So you're going to be below the x-axis. So if you were slowing down, your numbers are going to be getting closer and closer towards zero but below the x-axis. So this would be in the negative direction. All right. So now let's try these. An object sets the cruise control to 15 meters per second for 10 seconds. So. Here's our very general velocity versus time graph. And cruise control is set for 15 meters per second for 10 seconds. I'm just going to sketch that in there. Makes sense, right? Because at one second, your cruise control is still on, cruise control is still on, cruise control, cruise control, cruise control, cruise control. You're not hitting the gas, you're not hitting the brake, yet you are moving. So clearly there's some velocity that you're moving at. So that would be above your x-axis there. Okay, so then an object slows down for 20 seconds. Notice how these are not being very specific. So technically, you can have more than one plausible answer for these, especially if you're telling me like slowing down in the negative direction or slowing down in the positive direction. So these are honestly just try these out. Let's see how you're feeling with them, and then let's be for real with them when we actually give you words for like um, examples for you to try on your own. Okay, so once again, an object slows down for 20 seconds. So an object is slowing down would mean that your velocity is going from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. But we're going to say in the positive direction. Just to be really, really specific. So that would look like this. Okay, so what about an object that speeds up for 20 seconds? And once again, let's talk about positive direction. Sorry, this one's going to be kind of small. <laughs> so if you're speeding up for 20 seconds in the positive direction, you would look like that. Do not get lazy and forget your labels and your titles. Okay, moving right along. Acceleration versus time graphs. So for acceleration versus time graphs, this is going to be like crazy simple. You're either going to have a straight line at zero or you're going to have a straight line above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Now, once again, that's going to be speeding up in the positive direction would be above the x-axis. Speeding up in the negative direction would be below the x-axis, a straight line. Okay, so slowing down in the positive direction would be a negative, and slowing down in the negative direction would be a positive. So if you are speeding up, in the positive direction, that would be a positive acceleration. So speeding up in the negative direction would be a negative acceleration. Slowing down in the positive direction would be a negative acceleration. And slowing down in the negative direction would be a positive acceleration, right? Because two negatives give you a positive, two positives give you a positive, a negative and a positive gives you a negative. So there's kind of like a summing it up for you. Or you're going to just simply have a straight line at zero, at zero implies on the x axis. Pretty simple there. Let's try it though. Okay, so it says an object is moving at a constant speed for 10 seconds. 
If you're moving at a constant speed, then that means that your cruise control was set. So literally put yourself behind the driver's seat, guys. Are you touching the gas pedal? Are you touching the brake pedal? Are you sitting there with your legs crossed while you're just uh, steering the car? Hopefully not, but technically, eh. Okay, so this is what your graph would look like. And I'm gonna do this one in black so you can actually see it. Since your cruise control is set, you are not pushing the accelerator nor the brake, therefore, that's what your graph should look like. Okay, an object hits the accelerator uniformly for 10 seconds. So in other words, you are speeding up. And let's be more specific and say in the positive direction. Just so we're very accurate here. So if you're speeding up in the positive direction, would that give you a straight line above the x-axis or below the x-axis? Well, let's assess. Speeding up is a positive, and the positive direction is a positive, so therefore you would have a positive acceleration. In other words, a straight line. Oh, not bad. Sorry, guys. Above the x-axis. So that would look like this. Whereas speeding up in the negative direction would be below the x-axis because that would be a positive and a negative. Okay, so let's work on the kinematic stacks worksheet, draw on the slopes, discuss the movement or lack thereof for each graph. Get the kinematic stacks one worksheet out first, guys. Kinematic stacks one worksheet out. That's what we're going to do now. So top left hand side, you start off with number one. And we're going to do our displacement graphs in red, velocity in blue, and acceleration in green. So talk your way through this. What's this guy doing? Speeding up in the positive direction. So speeding up in the positive direction will look like this. Moving at a constant velocity in the positive direction. I apologize. Moving at a constant velocity in the positive direction. Okay, so since you are not speeding up or slowing down, then you will be right on your x-axis for your acceleration time graph. Okay, look at this one now. So for that one there, we are constant velocity that is decreasing. So you're going to be below the x-axis. Since it's constant again, you're not changing your speed whatsoever, so you are right on your x-axis. Also, think of it this way, guys. I mean, you're going to be taking your, like, for instance, this point right here is going to imply your y2 and your x2 value, and this point up here is going to be your y1 and your x1 value. So uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I'm just arbitrarily making these numbers. So we pretty much have 2 and 6. So that would be 2 minus 6 divided by, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 5, or divided by 5 minus 2. So that's going to give you a negative whatever, okay? So that would be implied that you are below the x-axis. So if you can't just look at these, throw numbers in there and try it out on your own. Okay, so this one is speeding up in the positive direction. So since you're speeding up in the positive direction, It'll look like this, and speeding up is positive, positive direction is positive, so you're going to have a straight line above your x-axis. Look at this one. Now, what are you doing? Think of yourself on the roller coaster here. Clickety-clack, 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 woo! Okay, what do you do on the roller coaster ride? You speed up, but how are you moving? Now you're in the negative direction there. So for this one, you should be Speeding up, but in the negative direction, so that would be below the x-axis. Speeding up, negative direction is a positive and a negative. Positive and a negative puts you below. All right, so you guys try the rest of these out here, and be cautious of steeper slopes on your displacement versus time graphs. This means that the horizontal line is going to be a higher value when you are drawing out your kinematic stacks. Hope this helps. Please see Mr. Dillick or myself with extra questions. We'll finish off the worksheets in class.